You know, one of the things about it is that the song, uh, when you sing electricity and the magnetism, well, the electricity is uh, supposed to sound like electricity, namely with lots of sparks, right? And the magnetism is supposed to sound like a magnetic field, but when you have a transformer and it goes mm, uh, that's like listening to the magnetic field. Now, one of the things that uh, is uh, difficult about physics 6C is that uh, it's a little hard to get a relationship to it because the electrons are too small. You can't see them. And so you have to rely on things like, well, maybe Stephanie will show you iron filings and so on that, that show you where the magnetic field is. And if you have a magnet under iron filings, you get this pattern. And that shows up the magnetic field. But you can't see the magnetic field exactly. But if you learn the song, that provides a way to get a relationship to the, to the marvelous uh, experience of electric and magnetic fields, which as we'll see in the song, are uh, described at, at the end, and it's something, as Stephanie said, is, is you have, we haven't got to yet, but uh, described at the end by Maxwell's equations. And, uh, and so if you learn the song, then it's a way to, to make the connection to the physics. And the physics is this marvelous description of the world of nature out there, which uh, it, it's a nice relationship to get. And so the elect electricity is supposed to sound like sparks. Electricity, you, you pronounce the word very sharply and carefully, and the magnetism is supposed to sound like the magnetic field, which is like in the transformer magnetism, and we hold the mm part for four beats. And you make it, you know, if you have a lower voice, you go mm -hmm. and that's the sound of the transformer, right? And so we get that. And so you have to sing electricity and magnetism, what, the ten verses, and they're twice for each verse, so two times ten is uh, twenty, right? Yeah, and so twenty times we sing electricity and magnetism. So you have lots of opportunity to practice. And then, in the, toward the end of the song, I'll show you some nice things that we can add by way of harmony. So, get the song off the website, and, and Stephanie will tell you where the URL is for getting the song. And the song looks like, uh, well, it looks like what I left over there in the chair. And you can get that, and take it home with you after the court, after the term is over. You'll have the whole summer. You can share it with your Oh yeah, it looks like this, okay. So you can grab that, print it, take it and share it with your family, with your parents, with your older brothers and sisters, with your friends, and, uh, and explain each verse to them. And oh, now I understand what that's about. So through the song, it's a serious song. Through the song, you get to learn the physics, and it's just marvelous. So, this is a lot of fun. Are you ready? You know, if you can't sing, uh, that's all right. You could just open your mouth and, and 
pretend like you're pronouncing the words, but don't make any sound. <laughs> okay. very large, but my little mouse knew all about cows, so he carried an electronic charge. He could calculate the integral of e dot dx over the surface of his sphere, and set it equal to the charge inside, divided by epsilon zero. Yes! Set it equal. Well, you remember that when I when, when when I say yes, it's your turn to sing, right? And all you do is just repeat the line that we just sang. So if I set it equal to the charge inside divided by epsilon zero, yes. Set it equal to the charge inside divided by epsilon zero. Oh. Okay, that's good. Much better. Electricity and the magnetism. Electricity and the magnetism. Now the electron's charge is not very large when measured in the units that we know. Much to our surprise, that charge is one ties in with a quantum that Millikan did show. Was minus 1.6 times 10 raised to the power of minus 19. Coulomb's, that is, in the EMM bit is no smaller as ever been seen. Yes. Coulombs that is in the E and M is no smaller has ever been seen. Electricity in the magnetism. May I sing it? Electricity in the magnetism. It's time to review that near a charge Q there is something considered essential. You'll survive if you can derive the electrostatic potential. Integrate the vector field from point A to point B. Get the potential difference delta V, and we call the delta V as a scalar quantity. It's a measure of potential energy. Yes, we call the delta V as a scalar quantity. It's a measure of potential energy. Per unit charge. Okay, right. Now the capacitor, what is it for? It will store electrostatic energy. In the, when highly concentrates in the space between the plates, the electrostatic field, we call it E. And take a charge Q and divide by delta V. You will have the capacity, see, yes, the capacitor. That's what it's for, it will store electrostatic energy. The capacitor, yes, the capacitor. That's what it's for, it will store electrostatic energy. Now it may seem unreal, but the magnetic field results from special relativity. We can prove that when a charge moves that there will be a feeling from it B. And when a charge moves through a B field, of course, 
We thank calculate the Lawrence force its Q times E plus B cross B, a result of special relativity. Yes, it's Q times E plus B cross B, a result of special relativity. Now we take a little hoop and we make a current loop. It's a dipole of magnetic moment mu. It's very easy to calculate the B sub Z. It takes just a moment or two. And if we choose, we may use the formula for B O and Savar. The magnetic field B along the axis Z drops off like the inverse cube of R. Yes, yes, yes! And then B along the axis Z drops off like the inverse cube of R. Now, where, oh, where is the law of Ampere? In the text on page 693. As we shall see, we can calculate B for cases of high symmetry. Calculate the integral of B dot DL. We'll have no trouble with the math. And the result ought to be I times mu naught with I inside the integration path. Yes, the result ought to be I times E naught with I on the integration path. Electricity and the magnetism. Electricity and the magnetism. Now, the next thing that we saw was Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. It's now in use to generate the juice for electrical power production. Differentiate the flux with respect to T to get the electromotive force. So when we watch our TV or we pay PG and E, we'll remember what we learned in this course. Yes, so when we watch our TV, we pay PG and E, we'll remember what we learned in this course. Electricity and the magnetism. Electricity and magnetism. Now, I said I would, I would uh, tell you something else. If we could make a little harmony with the electricity and magnetism part. Electricity and the magnetism. Now, so if you have a higher voice, like if you're an alto or a soprano, Electricity and the magnetism. Electricity and the magnetism. And if you sing the normal one, electricity and the magnetism. Now the thing is that chorus ends on a chord. What is that chord? That chord is a dominant seventh. This is one of the primary metaphors for this song. Because what does a dominant seventh mean? In the, in the culture, in the Western uh, uh, musical culture, the dominant seventh, what does it mean? It means that we're not quite finished yet. We're not, the story has not ended. And so there are more verses to come. That's what it means when you're in the dominance. The dominant, dominant doesn't have anything to do with dominate or, or being better than or, or higher than or something like that. No, it's in a musical term. 
that means on the fifth uh, note of the, of the tonic scale. And the seventh, you know, that's uh, that's the seventh. See, that's the fifth. And um, and when you end a piece on that chord, it leaves you not quite finished. So that's a sign that the story has not ended. And when we get to the end of the song, well, the last words in the song are on the dominant seventh. So it means that the physics involved is not quite finished. You'll learn, you don't know now probably very much about Maxwell's equations, but Maxwell's equations is yet to come, and it's a marvelous structure the Maxwell's equation. So, so keep that in mind and let's let's just try singing that with that harmony. That's the dominant seven. Try that. Electricity and the magnetism. Now put it together with the Lord. Electricity and the magnetism. Electricity and the magnetism. Okay. Well, I had an alligator. He swallowed an oscillator. So he had some capacitance and inductance, inductance and capacitance. And then a little later he swallowed the generator and he drove that circuit into resonance. Now he was so great he would oscillate with a little LVIDT. He'd a very high Q. Just like me and you, yes, my alligator, he had quality. Yes, he had a very high Q. Just like me and you, yes, my alligator, he had quality. I don't hear the harmony. videos of the songs that you made for this class. They're marvelous. Thank you very much for, for um, making those. So, but put the words, make the words fit the notes. From the curl and the divergence, we find complete emergence of the electromagnetic theory. Like that, okay. Now, from the curl and the divergence, 
We find complete emergence of the electromagnetic theory. In electricity and the magnetism. In electricity and the magnetism. Once more. Electricity and the magnetism. The story is not over yet. Okay, good luck on the final exam. <laughs> Have a nice time. Take that song home and share it with your friends, and you will do better on the final. I can guarantee it.